Unpredictably Irrational The Hidden Forces That Shape Our Decisions by Dan Early When I purchased my first laptop ever, I admit to being overwhelmed with information that I didn't really understand. I ended up getting a middle-of-the-road model with a freebie thrown in. According to Dan Early, I was predictably irrational in my choice. Dan Early, author of Predictably Irrational, The Hidden Forces That Shape Our Decisions, is a behavioral economist. He disagrees with classical economic theory that assumes that humans are rational beings and that spending and investing behaviors are predictably based on logic. But behavioral economists say that economic theories should be based on how people actually behave. They explore the forces beyond our reason that influence our decision and behaviors. Early has conducted a number of experiments that peel back our rational facade and expose our irrational behaviors. He proposes that understanding common behaviors can help us make more informed and humane choices. Here are several irrational behaviors to watch out for. The truth about relativity. Humans often choose a preference based on comparisons at hand. An example is the way I chose my laptop. I looked for the middle range choice, not the highest, but definitely avoiding the lowest. Relative to the cheap option, this one seemed to have nice features, and relative to the top-of-the-line laptop, its price seemed more appropriate. Real estate agents use this technique when they show you more than the house you asked to see. The other options serve as a reference for comparison and highlight the choice the agent hopes you will make. Especially in a field where you are not an expert, it is difficult to make a totally logical choice, and subtle nudges in presentation can influence you without you realizing it. The Fallacy of Supply and Demand while supply and demand is considered a law in economic circles, Early insists that much more goes into affecting what people will pay for an item than the available supply. Early says that humans adapt anchor prices, what they initially pay for an item, and stick with those anchors. People moving from a location with inflated housing prices to locations with lower housing prices seldom take a lower mortgage and save money. They tend instead to move into a bigger, better home and keep the same financial commitment. The opposite is also true. The anchor price can overrule reason and preference. Early suggests that checking these preset anchors occasionally is important, especially on things you buy repeatedly. For example, has it become your anchor to pay $5 for a coffee even at the drive-thru or $100 for a pair of jeans that you will wear only around home? The cost of free. As I admitted earlier, I did choose the laptop that came with a freebie. It was a free stylus and it is still in the box. But getting that free item was a huge motivation, and I convinced myself that I needed it. Early explains this behavior as a fear of losing. After all, if you pay nothing for something, you haven't actually lost anything even if you don't really need it or like it. The problem is, we often overlook the cost of free. Consider your time as being worth something, and ask what you paid in time to get that free item. Also, be aware of what else you needed to purchase to get it. A certain subscription order service, for example, gives you a free gift, if you spend X amount of money on your monthly order, spend $5.99 more and receive a free gift. Often the free gift is worth about $5.99. Please don't forget to support our channel by liking, subscribing, and commenting on this video. All right, let's get back to it. The cost of social norms. According to Early, the weakest way to motivate people is with money. This may seem unreasonable, but businesses would do well to understand that humans are more deeply motivated by feelings of worth, accomplishment, recognition, and shared success. He devised several experiments where mindless computer tasks were carried out by students for recognition alone, for recognition with pay, and for pay with no recognition of the value of their work. People did the most work for recognition alone followed by recognition with pay. They did the least when they were paid, but there was no recognition of their work. Further, humans see a divide between socially normed work and market normed work. Take Christmas dinner at Grandma's house as an example. No one would offer to pay Grandma for the dinner, even though it was expensive for her in both time and money. Similarly, doctors who make huge paychecks as surgeon often pay to do free medical mission work abroad. Humans can be highly motivated by a chance to show themselves virtuous. The power of a free cookie. However, the two, the social norm and the market norm, do not function together very effectively. Virtue and selflessness seem to disappear when a price is attached. A great example of this is when a preschool that was having trouble with late pickups attached a harsh fee. They found, unfortunately, that the fee moved people from a social mindset to a market mindset. People no longer felt guilty for being late. They felt they were simply getting a service that they were entitled to because they were paying. 
as late pickups became more prevalent. The preschool tried to go back to the first situation with no fee, but found that the parents stayed in the market mindset and took advantage of the now free service. Overall, humans are less generous when a monetary value is attached. We move from the social mindset to the market mindset. When promoting social causes, motivate people with the cause itself, and they will work selflessly for the cause. Rather than cheapening their work with token financial compensation, offer recognition and perhaps a gift instead. The Problem of Procrastination Early's research shows that it is common human behavior to procrastinate, a result of immediate gratification triumphing over long-term benefit. The successful way to motivate action in a timely manner is to build in rewards, punishments, and clear deadlines. Medical offices that charge a fee that is returnable only if you show up for that certain undesirable test have a much higher rate of patients showing up. Teachers have found that long projects require scheduled check-ins throughout to ensure students are making progress. The same is true for business projects. Layers of accountability can help move humans more effectively toward goal completion. The High Price of Ownership Another common but irrational human behavior is to overvalue what is our own or even what we have our hearts set on owning. Checking out yard sale prices will prove this. We can misjudge the value of certain things we desire as well. For example, after watching a certain car on the lot and test driving it several times, it is difficult to be detached. The car feels like it is already ours, and we react differently because of that anticipated ownership. You might notice that a real estate agent will often refer to parts of the house you are touring as yours. Here is your dining area, and this will be your office. This vocabulary builds the feeling of ownership and diminishes your ability to objectively evaluate the purchase. Behaving objectively is not as natural as once believed. Behavioral economists recommend that to predict behavior, economic and otherwise, we must take note of human complexities. And when it comes to making purchases, don't fall to that free offer thinking you are getting something for nothing. You don't need a new stylist, do you? <laughs>